In this video, I'd like to show you an updated way to look at discriminant validity. An article was recently published by Runke and Cho in Organizational Research Methods. Here's the citation right here. You can just pause this if you'd like. And they show through simulations that there are some issues with the fornell larker method and with the HTMT method. And so after a lot of article, I'll just scroll down a bunch. Let's see, keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. They come to the conclusion in Table 12 that the simplest and most valid way to assess discriminant validity is simply to do a bootstrap on the model and then assess the upper limit of the correlations between factors. And if those correlations are less than 0.8 on the upper limit, then there's no problem with discriminant validity. If it's between 0.8 and 0.9, then there may be a marginal problem. If it's between 0.9 and 1, then there's a moderate problem. And if it is 1, then there's a severe problem with discriminant validity. So let me show you how to calculate this in Smart PLS 4. So here we are in Smart PLS 4. I'm going to open both a CBSEM model and a PLS SEM model. Let's start with CBSEM. So here is a CBSEM model. You can see we have four factors. And all we have to do is go to Calculate, Bootstrapping, and this is important. The default typically is most important amount of results, but I would like you to change this to complete slower amount of results. And then you can just keep the defaults. Usually you'd run more subsamples, but in the interest of time, I'll just do 500, start calculation. And once it's done running, you're just going to go over here to Quality Criteria and Factor Correlations, open that up, and you have the regular ones here, but what we want to look at is the confidence intervals, or if you like, the bias corrected confidence intervals. Those tend to be more accurate. And we want to look at the 97.5, the upper limit. And once again, if all of these are less than 0.8, then we're in good shape. There are no discriminant validity concerns. As you can see, that is the case here. And most likely scenario, this is corroborated by the HTMT and the Fornell Larker criteria. Now, let me show you how to get that in PLS SEM. Here is a PLS SEM model. Once again, I'm going to go to Calculate and Bootstrapping and do the complete slower version so I get all of the results. Start calculation. It runs very fast. And then over here in the results, we look at in the quality criteria latent variable correlations. Confidence intervals, bias corrected. And here's the 97.5 upper limit on those correlations. Notice they are all less than 0.8, which means we are again good. No discriminant validity issues. Here are those cutoffs once again. As we saw, we were all less than 0.8, so we have no problem. Well, I hope that's helpful. It certainly is a simple way to establish discriminant validity. It is the way I've been using for my most recent papers.